हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर खोटे ऋषिकेश एंड यू आर वॉचिंग बी एस सी क्लासेस बॉटनी स्टडी चैनल हियर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर डिस्कशन द लास्ट पॉइंट इज रिमेनिंग दैट इज द जीरो फाइटिक प्लांट्स इन प्रीवियस थ्री पार्ट्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द हाइड्रोफाइट मिसोफाइट एंड हेलोफाइट्स इन इकोलॉजिकल ग्रुपिंग ऑफ प्लांट कैटेगरीज सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस एज प्रेजेंटेड ऑन द स्क्रीन द एरिया वेर वॉटर अवेलेबिलिटी इज वेरी लेस or we can say the water scarcity region then which are these such regions such as the desert area is famous for such region the xeric condition is the highlighting feature of such area so what is xeric condition xeric condition means the soil in such area shows the acidic nature less water holding capacity and plant in these areas will have to face the water scarcity water is also known as a life if no water no life will be there but in xerophytic condition water availability is there but very acute water availability is there acute means very less amount of water is available generally during very short period of rainy season water is available so the plant in these areas have adapted in such a way that to withstand such a harsh environment for that plant have to do adaptation to face high temperature to face high light condition to face high wind velocity and the soil is poorly water holding capacity so all these factor consideration the plant as i have presented here shows the modification with respect to the leaves roots and their stem we will be discussing about their types of xerophytes the external feature of root stem and leaf and internal feature of root stem and leaf so let's begin with the types of the xerophytic plants which are the types there are only three types of xerophytic plants which are these three types on the basis of their life span please highlight this on the basis of how much time they can withstand these conditions so on that basis first type is annual xerophytic plants so what is annual xerophytic plant means these plants generally complete their life cycle during the one year period mostly these plant co covers their life cycle in two month period so for that they have to wait for a rainy season in the rainy season duration whatever water is available they use this water they complete their life cycle and they wait for the next rainy season to come so the plant here in annual category is the first type generally shows the argimon mexicana type of example example as i have presented here this plant is generally present in our area also so this plant is very famous for their anti cancerous properties if you find in your backyard or any street this plants are known as annual xerophytic plant so the next category is the perennial xerophytic category plant these plants are also known as a non succulent type of xerophytic plant so what is what is so special about this plant is that the non succulent xerophytic plant shows longer life cycle period these plants have adaptation to pause their life cycle they can pause their development we can say in better words so they pause their uh, development for wait of rainy season they wait for rainy season during the rainy season they do their developmental strategy in fast way after rainy season go away they wait for next rainy season but this plant do not die very early as we have seen annual xerophytic plant that they die during the period of one year by completing their life cycle but this perennial xerophytic plant complete their life cycle more the it they require more than one year so these plants are very unique in our area acacia nilotica name as a photograph is indicated here the very famous plant as a xerophytic plant where you can find they require more than one year to complete their life cycle and many features are also have adaptation they have shown we will discuss about in external internal feature category now the third category is the succulent xerophytic plant so what is succulent xerophytic plant these plants generally for example aloe vera it is shown on the uh, in the photograph these plants shows very thickly modified fleshy parts these plants also shows very modified roots but thick leaves 
and generally spines are present on the body of these plants. Spine is a well characteristic of xerophytic plant, but the thicky and fleshy part is a characteristic of succulent xerophytic plant. So these are the three highlighting characteristics as we have discussed here. Now we are going to discuss about their external morphology with respect to the root stem and leaf and anatomy of the root stem and leaf of the xerophytic plant. So let's begin in short about the external morphology of the root of the xerophytic plant. So the morphology of the root is such a way that these plants shows two types of roots on the basis of how deep they penetrate the soil. Generally, the xerophytic plants do not go very deep into the soil, but there are very few species. They can penetrate the soil up to certain depth, up to five to six feet only. But many xerophytic plants shows superficial roots, means their roots go up to the half feet only. Okay, so the root performing the function of absorption Generally, these roots are containing cuticle surrounding to them because the soil on which these plants are growing is getting very hot because sunlight is continuously present there, no shadow. So they have to face the heating of the soil and to avoid that these plants contain very thick cuticle surrounding to their roots. And most importantly, if you look at this plant, these plants generally shows very less height. They do not achieve height more than 5 to 6 feet. There are very few species who can achieve height more than 10 feet. It is an exception on the basis where that plant is growing. If the xeropatic plant is growing in our area, if water is available, then, then that plant can achieve that height. But at actual environment, these plants cannot reach up to the certain height. Generally, plants require height to achieve sunlight. But sunlight is plenty available here, but sunlight is more than sufficient for that this plant have shown modification. So we have discussed about the root. There is nothing much to more discuss about the root. Let's go, uh, let's move to the next point that is the external morphology of the stem of the xerophytic plant, which is most important, I would say. Why it is so important? Because these xerophytic plant shows modification in such a way that <coughs> their stem also can perform photosynthesis. If you observe carefully in this photograph, the leaves of the plant has been completely modified into the spine. So all leaves are converted into the spines. Spines are nothing but modified leaves. And the stem region is performing the function of photosynthesis. So the stem is greenish, fleshy, thick and very strong. You can say here, various different types of xerophytic plants as presented here in the photograph shows different different types of stem. So the stem is performing photosynthesis as well as they are giving height to this plant. So they are also responsible for to store the water also. In case of succulent xerophytic plant, these stems are also involved in the water storage. We will look at, uh, look at it into the anatomy study. So it was regarding only the external morphology of the stem of the xeropathy plant. Now we will be discussing about the external morphology of the leaf of the xeropathy plant. If you look at the leaves, these leaves mostly are reflective in nature. Why would these leaves are so reflective? Because they contain waxy coating like material around to it. This reflective material helps leaves to maintain their temperature. How? When sunlight falls on the leaves, these lights get reflected and due to that reflection, the leaves somehow protect themselves from heating. So these leaves shows stomata presence, but stomata number are more on the bottom surface as compared to the upper surface. But please remember this, the stomata type is of sunken stomata. Sunken means they are embedded in epidermal layer. Sometimes epidermis is more than one layer. If the stomata remain open, the whole water loss will take place. These leaves also shows the thickening because of the they are also involved in water storage. Whatever water is available in early in the morning during the 8 sorry 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. when temperature goes down the water dews are start to accumulate on the surface of the xeropathy plant. These plants store this water also. So they are very conscious about the water surrounding to them. 
that way these plants shows modification with respect to the root stem and leaves just we have seen externally now we are going to discuss about the internal morphology of this xeropoietic plant or we can say anatomy of this xeropoietic plant first let's discuss about the transverse section of the root of this xeropoietic plant what you can see here a very general common diagram where you can find no advancement is there the ts of the root shows the cuticle or upper epidermis is there the cortex region is also there and the stellar region contain well developed xylem and phloem the roots need to penetrate the soil in order to find the water but xeropoietic plant shows no such deep growing roots that's why their roots are present on the surface region only so you will find the ts shows no certain modification with respect to the root of the ts of the root of the xeropoietic plant if you look at the ts of the stem of the xeropoietic plant you will find it is most interesting phenomenon and many time in exam questions are based upon the ts of the stem of the xeropoietic plant why because obviously if leaves are reduced into the spines the stem is going to perform the function like a leaf as well as their own function that is giving support to the height or achieving the height for the plant so the stem anatomy shows the presence of stomata as well as you can find the palisades are also present here so why palisades are here because palisades perform the function of photosynthesis friends please remember these these are the stem anatomy but look like a leaf anatomy because there are stomata also present here and palisade is also there as well as in addition to those the other vascular regions or vascular bundle are also present here no cambium like tissues are present because they do not require horizontal growth or secondary growth but water storage tissues are also you can find in some species of the xeropoietic plant and the vascular tissues contain well developed xylem and well developed phloem the xylems are developed in such a way that they absorb the water from the soil and the sto water storing tissues are in uh, company with the xylem tissues to store that acquired water so water loss should not take place and the other features such as the uh, hypodermal region epidermal regions are also there cortex which contain parenchymatous cells which store the food material in the form of starch granule so it was regarding the ts of the stem of the xeropoietic plant now we are going to discuss about the ts of the leaf of the xeropoietic plant the ts of the leaf shows no major differences other than the mesophytic plant but you will find there are water storage tissues in aloe vera type of succulent category xeropoietic plant because the water storage tissues are there who stores the water in many cases you will find there are stomata which are present in more number at the lower surface and less number on the upper surface but but the stomata are of sunken stomata type so these are the highlighting feature vascular tissues are also there palisade is there spongy parenchyma cells are there and you will find resin duct and oil ducts are also present in the ts so it was regarding the anatomy and morphology of the xeropoietic plant and i am sure you must have understood somewhat about the ecological adaptation which is very important phenomenon because plants have covered the whole surface of this earth and earth contain very diverse habitat with respect to the habitat these plants have adapted themselves in such area for that they have shown halophytic hydrophytic xerophytic and mesophytic categories which we are studying here and today i can say that we have completely studied about the ecological grouping of the plant and thank you for your time for attending these lectures and i would request you to subscribe this channel so you will get the notification of the next lecture thank you so much for watching this video we will meet